Hello everyone, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Discworld 2. Now we're back here at the Garden of Unseen University, because we do have one thing we need to pick up here in Ake More Pork. Yes, we're going to pick ourselves up a girl. But we're not going to do that by buying her a drink women and complimenting her. Jokes for women. We're going to do it by sticking the steak in a compost heap. Now I have a helpless girl in bondage in a clown costume in my trunk. Reminds me of Akon last year. I'm joking. Let the record show I'm joking. I have never put a woman in a Harley Quinn costume in bondage in my trunk for nefarious purposes. Or non-nefarious purposes. Or at all. So what are we going to do with a uh, suffragester? Well, we're going to do a couple of things, but the first one will involve triggering the uh, infamous Easter egg of this game. But first, we're going to go save Granny Weverwax from Casanunda. If Rinsewind stops getting stuck on things. Why don't you leave this poor, silver-bearded old woman alone? Never! I am Kasananda, the second greatest lover who ever lived. And this woman's beauty, oh, she sing to me! Well, at least until my next challenge. I'm now ready for more women. Hey, I take them all on at once. Oh dear. Right, well I'll just leave you to your hopeless task, shall I? Still, it seems a shame to see you wasting yourself on... Wasting? Well, a man like you shouldn't be content with second best, should he? For instance, I met a few women just recently. Dark, mysterious, energetic... <gasps> Where? Where? Would you believe Jelly Baby? Clearly I'm dealing with inferior intellects, which are hard to find, believe me. All right, so now we can talk to Granny Weatherwax. Granny Weatherwax. A tough lady, this one. My word, I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of that lady. Maybe there isn't even a right side. There really isn't, and looks like we have an icon for... For asking about elves. Yeah, because uh, Granny is something of an expert. In the book Lords and Ladies, she has a major part in stopping an elvish invasion of the Discworld. But uh, first things first. Thank heaven that stupid dwarf is gone. Thank you, young man. I just can't imagine what he wanted. Now, what can I do for you? What are you doing here in the morgue? Practicing. I didn't think it needed much practice. I thought it just... just sort of happened. Oh no, you have to work at it. Good grief, it certainly doesn't just happen. It needs work, man. And you have to practice if you're going to do it right. There's your technique, your projection, and then of course there's control and endurance. Very important endurance. Endurance? But it lasts forever. That's the point of the whole thing. What? Mind projection? I only ever have the energy to do it for two or three hours and I'm pretty damn good, let me tell you. Mind projection? Yeah. Into ravens and rabbits and such like. Very important witch talent, mind projection. Why? What did you think I was talking about? Nothing, never mind. Just forget I mentioned it. Yeah, actually in the books they call the technique borrowing and uh, Granny Weverwax is indeed the world's greatest at it. I think she's managed to do it for days at a time rather than hours, though. Hence the I ain't dead sign. But, uh, yeah, she is incredible at it, and I hesitate to mention uh, she achieves uh, her crowning achievement because it kind of spoils 
one of the uh, books a little bit, but she manages to take control of an entire swarm of bees, which basically have one mind but aren't. And it's you know been said to be possible, but she's the first witch who definitely pulls it off with witnesses. Anyway, elves. Tell me, elves, are they in your area of expertise at all? Oh yes, you've come to the right woman. Elves? I wouldn't trust those magic-wielding backstabbers any further than I could throw a very large heavy thing. And the Elf Queen is the worst. Glamour, you see. She can hold a man captive without uttering a word. Ah, oh, I see. The evil spell of her eyes, eh? <laughs> Can't say anyone's ever looked high enough to notice her eyes. You can find the entrance to their world in a stone circle near Langres. But don't walk in. They spot anything that ain't unnatural. Anything that ain't an elf, a unicorn, or an ogre without at least three heads and a major dental problem. And they'll have you sucking on your toes and singing tra la la lolly quicker than spit in your eye. They'll do that too. And that opens up the stone circle in the forest of Lankara. gateway to the Elven Kingdom. Now, of course... No, nope. No matter how closely you have me examine them, I'm afraid they're always just going to be stones. Hang on. You know, maybe this is one of those interdimensional gates I've heard tell about. Let's just leave her alone. 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 Not a bad idea, but the legs seem to get in the way. Okay. Now, supposedly, if we click the Suffragester on us here 12 times, we get we get a different message from once on the 12th try, and at that point, we can start walking through the gate, and something special will happen. Hey, that tickles. Although I may have just jinxed it by clicking on Rinse One. But we'll get to see why we uh, can't just walk in here. And we'll have to be careful what we take with us, because the uh, luggage cannot walk through, being a magical construct. Oh boy, a pretty fairy castle. If we hang around long enough, maybe there'll be a lovely parade. That leads to the magic stones. So yes, we can try and walk up there, but uh, nothing doing. And don't come back. You'll set foot in here again, and you'll be taking your ears home in your hat. We are fey creatures of the twilight, pal, not little tooth fairies. The difference is, we take all your teeth and put your head under the pillow. Hey, by the way, isn't it time the Queen's pet came back? It's been gone a long time. Oh, they always find their way home. Hint, hint. Okay. Now, thankfully, I think we can skip the animation. We're supposed to do this about ten times, I think.
think I may have, in fact, jinxed it by uh, clicking on Rinse Wind after clicking the Suffer Jester on me. So let's try that again. Let's just leave her alone. Let's just leave. Let's just leave. Let's just leave. Let's just. Let's just leave. 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 Let's just. Let's just leave. 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 Rinse wind. In me. Or maybe I have to click her on the pathway. Rather than make you watch me keep clicking over and over, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here, and once I get the video to load the Easter egg, uh, we'll pick up from there. Be right back. Yep. Here we go. It's deja vu all over again. I remember this. Aha! Things have changed, haven't they? Who are you? I'm you, just better drawn and animated. Just look at those jagged pixels, not to mention that mono voice. Please tell me what's going on. I'm from the sequel, and there's been a few changes, I can tell you. Higher resolution, a wizard must look the good, you know. Better sound, after all my voice isn't supplied by just anybody, you know. Longer rest periods between quests, less walking, that sort of thing. For the life of me, I don't see why they don't just have lots of film clips. I could sleep through the whole game then. Well, if you're from the sequel, then perhaps you could help me. I've been wandering around here for days like a puppet on a string. That person playing this game has no idea. Could you please explain to me that thing about butterflies and lampposts? Are you kidding? That's not going to help you. Honestly, some people. Look, I'm afraid I have to be somewhere else. Be seeing you then. Goodbye for now. So yeah, the trick is that you can't escape through the animation going into the fairy realm and out of the fairy realm. You just have to go through this every single time. And then you do it five times and then you'll get a different clip of Rincewind going into the past game and talking to his old self. Now I have to suffer through this, but I see no reason you have to, so... Since I have the editing software to do so, we'll go ahead and cut and come back to the next clip. Oh. And again. Oh dear, that deja vu headache is coming on again. Who are you? I'm you, just better drawn and animated. Just look at those jagged pixels, not to mention that mono voice. Please tell me what's going on. I'm from the sequel, and there's been a few changes, I can tell you. Higher resolution, a wizard must look the good, you know. Better sound, after all my voice isn't supplied by just anybody, you know. Longer rest periods between quests, less walking, that sort of thing. Well, at least this keeps you off the streets. Well, if you're from the sequel, then perhaps you could help me. I've been wandering around here for days like a puppet on a string. That person playing this game has no idea. Could you please explain to me that thing about butterflies and lampposts? Now look, we've had words about this kind of thing before. You come home from a long day's work, you switch on the computer and spend hour after hour fiddling about with object combinations, never quite getting it right. Ah, now there's satisfaction for you. If ever you're in Ankmore Pork, then look me up. Goodbye! See you later! And 
once more with feeling. And here we go again. It's amazing. I think I've had this deja vu before. Who are you? I'm you, just better drawn and animated. Just look at those jagged pixels, not to mention that mono voice. Please tell me what's going on. I'm from the sequel and there's been a few changes, I can tell you. Higher resolution, a wizard must look the good, you know. Better sound, after all my voice isn't supplied by just anybody, you know. Longer rest periods between quests, less walking, that sort of thing. For the life of me, I don't see why they don't just have lots of film clips. I could sleep through the whole game then. Well, if you're from the sequel, then perhaps you could help me. I've been wandering around here for days like a puppet on a string. That person playing this game has no idea. Could you please explain to me that thing about butterflies and lampposts? No, no, not in any shape, way or form. Not in any permutation or restatement. Allow me to compliment the game designers for establishing a logic system completely at odds with a real rational world. Sort of explains a lot, doesn't it? I want to be the first person in the game to say f Hmm. Not one of your better ideas, I'm afraid. Been there, done that. Let's leave well enough alone. What do you mean I've already said it? All right then. I want to be the first person in a sequel to say f Anyway, nobody wrote in and said they'd heard it in the first game. It must have been too well hidden. Well, who'd have thought, eh? Look, I'm afraid I have to be somewhere else. See you later. Goodbye. <clears throat> Yes, that is, of course, a reference to the infamous uh, Discworld Easter egg that nobody ever was able to find. And the directions for finding it were a bit rubbish. Or so we thought, because it turns out that since I recorded my Discworld Let's Play last year, in 2015, it's June 2016 as I'm recording this, uh, somebody actually did figure out how to trigger the original Discworld Easter Egg, in which Eric Idle becomes the first person to say the F-word in an adventure game. Allegedly. And I might go back and shoot a special video just to show that off, even though that would require me playing Discworld all the way through again. Which would not be a bad thing, but I'm... Not really feeling up to doing that, having just played through the sequel. Anyway, I'll see you again in a moment for the fourth of these little bits. And part four. My back! My aching back! This place looks like a good place to sleep. You know, there's something familiar about this whole scene. Who are you? And you, there's something familiar about your voice. Yeah, 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 the graphics may have changed, but the voice is definitely the same. Please tell me what's going on. I'm from the sequel, and there's been a few changes, I can tell you. Higher resolution, a wizard must look the good, you know. Better sound, after all my voice isn't supplied by just anybody, you know. Longer rest periods between quests, less walking, that sort of thing. Well, at least this keeps you off the streets. Well, if you're from the sequel, then perhaps you could help me. I've been wandering around here for days like a puppet on a string. That person playing this game has no idea. Could you please explain to me that thing about butterflies and lampposts? Read the hint book, have we? Well, just play properly and not spoil it for everybody else. Fascinating, isn't it? The length of desperate stupidity some people will go to just to solve a game. Sorry, can't stay in chat all day. Must be off. Be seeing you then. Goodbye for now. Yeah, you kids today have no idea how easy you have it. Back in the day, we had to go to a hint book that cost about half as much as the game itself. You know, we didn't have GameFAQs.com. We had to call a hint line for $5 a minute hopefully get pointed in the right direction and that's the way it was and we liked it and just doing that voice I'm dating myself with that reference ah well it's not like anybody else is dating me
And now we will go and see part five. Which, oddly enough, part five is the real Easter egg, apparently. You can see the regular four just going through this and sitting through the animation. The fifth one is the real trick. And we will see that in a moment. Well, try as I might, I could not get a fifth video to load. And in my research, it seems like the rumors of a fifth video are putting us on. Uh, there's only four videos online elsewhere that I could find, so I'm happy to leave well enough alone and say that we've uh, found the trick. So, I hope you enjoyed that, because that was really tedious from my end. But still rather amusing. So, now that we've come up with one use for a clown girl in bondage, let us go try another one. And you'll note that the vultures are following us around now, because we still have that rotten arm in our inventory. And they're here as well. A hole! Begging for a steak, I would say. Jokes for women! Now this looks really familiar. Women want the joke! Stone him! Yes, yes, yes! On the head! Ooh! Get him! Get him! Oh dear, that deja vu headache is coming on again. Oh well, it's what the punters want. Still, at least they know what's supposed to happen. Um, yada 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 yada. Ah, here we are. In that she did take comedy in vain, is hereby sentenced to be stoned by soft, chewy rock candy. What? Taken comedy in vain? How? Oh, it doesn't matter. It does. Define your terms, you fascist! Well, it's for lame comedy, then. Stuff that's lifeless, dull. The sort of rubbish you get when you lamely parrot off other people's material instead of coming out with something worthwhile or of your own. Stop that! But you were parroting! I am not parroting! I am parodying! Parodying! Completely different! Parodying! Remember that, and then we don't get sued. Oh, dear! Stop it! Stop it! Now who threw that? Was it you? Yes. Well? Well, she was parroting. Stop it! Stop it! Right, no one is to stone anybody until you blow his whistle! We've seen it! That's parroting! Stone him! Stone him! Not me! No, I'm not the one who wanted this stuff! They made me do it! I say, shall we call this one the dead parroting sketch? Watch it! And all of that just to get mm -hmm. some rock candy. And some rope. I have no further use for that. Can I pick up the small rocks? We cannot pick up the small rocks. Pumping humors. All right. Well, quick trip back to Ankmore Pork and the High Energy Building. Because now we have a question for Hex. Right! So the answer in? Yes, that is correct. Oh, look. They're all running around. 
They're, you know, keen to get started. Yeah, anyway, so we are now ready to get going. I mean, I can ask this machine a question now. Yes, quite right. Ask, you know, ask away. What do you call this machine again? Hex. A three-letter name. And it's not because it's, you know, useless. No matter what you might hear people say. <laughs> Hex. How ah, lovely. See anything wrong with the name at all? No. My research assistant seemed to think it's very appropriate. All right, all right. Let's just get on with it then, shall we? Right. Hex, I want you to tell me the answer to the question, why? Well? Ah, well, of course, a certain amount of working time is required for any problem of this type. Yeah? How long? According to my estimate, we should have your answer in a jiffy. A jiffy? Ah, that is the abbreviation of the Clatchian word jiffacitra, meaning eon or age of the world, probably about two million years. Would you like a cup of something while you wait? Hemlock. Oh, I don't know if we have any of that in stock. Look, there's no point in getting up tight. You'll just have to be patient. I mean, it's not as if you can just run off and somehow accelerate time. Oh yeah? Well, I'm a wizard! A bony fidey pointy-headed, skirt-wearing magic tosser! Although perhaps I should rephrase that. I can do anything I like! I'll accelerate time anywhere I want to, any when, any how. I'm going to accelerate time for those little six-legged idiots in there. Let them develop a civilization, new philosophies and entire galaxies of new perceptions. And then, I'm going to jump up and down on the lot of them. Hey! I'm really getting the hang of this science business, aren't I? Well, you're certainly getting a uh, handle on ripping off Douglas Adams. Glad they put some deep thought into this puzzle, though. I'll best ask Skaz to operate it. Alright. Now! Right, Hex, I want you to tell me the answer to the question, why? The. Now that wasn't so bad. You see what just a little bit of patience can... Shut up and tell me the damn answer! Ah, now let me see. Hmm. Well? Oh, it says, because. Is that all? Because? Well, it also says, blip, 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 out of cheese error. Blip, 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 cannot find drive Z. Blip, 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 unrecoverable application error. Blip, blip, blip. Please reboot universe. Blip, blip, blip. Year of the sloth. Blip, blip, blip. Oh, blip. Well, it's an answer. And at least it's not 42. The answer to the question, why? And boom. A ring. Aha. Uh -huh. And still drifting with the mystic eastern scent of plague victims. Nice. Now make a quick trip to Hollywood. Because I do believe we have a ring to turn in. There we are. One jelly baby and ring just for you. Going to look wonderful. We need something to go in the navel of sinful Sabrina, the belly dancer in scene 13. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Actually, you could uh, help Sabrina try on her costume if you'd like. 
Really? Where is she? Right here, big boy. Just wait there. I'll go get my bells and tassels. Gangway! All right, so now we have ourselves a horse costume. Looks like it'd fit. If only I could stick it down. Hmm. Because we do need to turn into a unicorn costume. One sticky hooter. Uh, we do like our sticky hooters, don't we? There we go. One unicorn suit. All right. Now, this being the only troll around who uh, might appreciate this. Anyway, here, try some candy rock. I bought it over from Jelly Baby, especially for you. Oh, thanks. Now, remember how we heard this is bad for trolls' teeth? Oh, oh, my tooth. Oh, no, my tooth. Oh, my tooth. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts me. Oh, I want my mummy. I want my mummy now. Okay, okay, don't cry. Lime scale everywhere. I'll see what I can do to pull it out for you. Yeah, because, a uh, little fact for those of you who are not fans of Discworld books, uh, trolls are creatures of living silicon. You know, they're rock men. And their teeth are diamond. So a lot of uh, trolls back in the old days got killed by adventurers looking to make a profit off of their teeth. And a troll can always make a fast couple of bucks selling his teeth. Not to the Tooth Fairy. So we've got a door right here, a rope right here. Tying that up won't do me much good. Here, let me try something. This should work. Alright, so now we have a Troll Tooth. Which is diamond. One diamond, reasonably clean, all for you. Now get out there and start in my clicky, or I'll take away all your makeup and ban you from ever visiting a hairdresser again. You heartless beast! Gee, anyone would think you've been round the world for this here thing. Yep, but we now have a babe in our luggage. For telling Dibbler, you found the babe. All right, so we've got our band, we've got our babe, we've got our curios. Now we just need to get our jingle. Oh, and we also do need to uh, break into the lair of the Elven Queen. Which means we're going to need somebody to help us out with that uh, unicorn costume. Unfortunately, Rincewind only has one friend who is reasonably reliable enough to be uh, pressured into something like this. But hey, you can always trust a librarian. Um, we're comrades, right? I mean, we'd stand up for each other. Through thick and thin, damn the press, backs to the wall kind of thing. So, wear a unicorn suit with me. <laughs> no, I want to go the front bit. It was my idea. All right. My old friend the librarian, who, quite frankly, smells like a giant ape. He'd only eat it. Ew. Hey, he took the front end. All right, so we now have Librarian in a unicorn suit. And since we can only take a few things with us when we go into the fairy realms, we'll need to take the camera in Rincewind's personal inventory as well.
All right. Once more, but we'll go ahead and skip it this time. All right. So now we put on this costume here. Brent's been looking uncharacteristically cheerful doing this. I don't know why I have to be the rear end. And what's really crazy is that the elves fall for this. All hail me. What? Come on, all hail me. It's been ten minutes since anyone said how fearsomely beautiful I am. Oh, um, right. Well, you're dangerously attractive, um, maddeningly gorgeous, um... Yes? Um, you're wonderful. Uh, you can torture small animals in a very regal way. Um, you can do amazing things with your hair. Well, what about you? Why haven't you said anything? Guards, off with his head. Uh, uh, wait, I, I, I meant to say something, but... Uh... But what? Uh, but, 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 um, but, but I, I was struck dumb by your beauty. That's it. Phew. Mm. All right. Slightly crawly. But you can keep all your bits if you stand over there and croak like a frog. Ribbit! 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 Absolute power! Who can say it isn't wonderful? Ribbit! Keep it going! You've still got plenty of little bits that could be chopped off, you know. Sorry. Uh, uh, ribbit, 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 ribbit. Now, looking at the elves and looking at the queen directly is a bad idea. Ribbit. Thankfully, the camera does give us enough of a shield. Smile. Ribbit. Say children's blood. Ribbit. got some film so let's get the heck out of here oddly enough the librarian did not come with us okay he's still there and Rinsman having great difficulty working past something there That joke was much more culturally irrelevant back when this game came out. And if I have to explain that, well, check out Jim Carrey's The Mask. Alright, but, uh, oh, we do need to go turn in the jingle before we're truly done here. So, one quick trip back out to the desert. Angus! Angus, don't put those in there! You know, they breed like flies. Oh, they are flies. Well, in which case, bring the popcorn and we'll watch them. Ooh. Hello? Hello? Look, am I coming to bedtime? 
No, lad, no! We're just settling down to a nice evening by the fire. I brought the answer, you know, to why. Well done, lad, well done! It's probably not what you expected. Out with it! It's a bit short. Speak up, lad, speak up! Well, all right. It's not really very conclusive. It just says, because. Then it says, blip, 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 out of cheese error. Blip, 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 cannot find drive Z. Blip, 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 unrecoverable application error. Blip, 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 please reboot universe. Blip, 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 you're the sloth. Blip, blip, blip. Angus, Angus, you were right, you were right, you were right. Angus, stop doing that right now and listen to me. Normally, I'd hang around long enough to check the goods, but in this case, a frenzy departure might be more advisable. So yeah, that's everything. Horrible little jingle. Oh gosh, not again. I'll never get the tune out of my head. But yes, we got the jingle, the girl, the band, and the curios. Yes, I'm not sure this is really quite his look. I better not disturb him at this time. He's a method actor, you know. Although, what method, nobody knows. All right, so. I found us our babe, Mr. Dibbler. Can she act? Of course she can act. She's a thespian. Yeah, well, that won't matter. That's very trendy these days. Fine. Well, consider her signed up. Badum -tsh. I found the band, Mr. Dibbler. Excellent. Are they good? Do they have the sleek, well-fed look of success? Good gods, no. They're all musicians. Oh, well, sign them on. That's the drawback of music, having to have all these musicians around. All right, we've got it. Here it is, one prime jingle, just for you. Hmm, yeah, yeah, hmm. Oh, I don't know. Can you get me another one? What? Only kidding. All right, and finally... The merchandising. Here we go. Novelties. Novelties? You call these novelties? I've never seen the likes of this sort of thing before. Exactly. That's why they're novelties. Go. I suppose so. I hate it when logic turns against me. Look, can you go and get philosophical on someone else's time, please? Some of us have got a game to play. That's it. I think we have everything. The jingle, the band, the girl, the novelties. Not to mention that the lead actor's out of makeup and ready to go. Right then. So it's lights, camera, angstrom. Don't you mean action? Oh, well, I suppose so, if you think that's easier. Come on, we've got some filming to do. I'm ready for my close-up now, Mr. Dibbler. All right! Lights! Camera! Achtung! Actin! Actinium, I'll get on with it! Death. Now is the winter of our discontent, made all the more drizzly by the lack of death. Ooh, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether to be extremely cool, reach the heights of fashion and snuff it, or to keep drawing breath and lose all fashion sense forevermore. So, what do you think? I'm trying not to. Ready? Cue piano! Piano? Roll em! Makeup! Makeup! 
Now is the winter of our discontent, made all the more drizzly by the lack of uh, death. Ooh, to be or not to be, that's the question. Uh, whether to be extremely cool, reach the heights of fashion uh, and snuff it, or to keep drawing breath and lose all fashion sense forevermore. Ready for the porcelain scene? Um, <laughs> look, look, can we just discuss this script for a moment? Roll em! Makeup! Now is the, the, the winter of our, of our tent, the discontent, made all the more drizzly by the, by the lack, lack of death. Oh, oh to be or, or, or not, not to be, that, 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 that is the answer. Uh, whether to be extremely cold, reaching the, the heights of fashion and, and sniffing, or, or to keep drawing breath and lose all fashion sense forevermore. Okay, everyone. The being smashed by a safe scene. And roll em. No, 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 look here. Make up. Now, Mr. Dibbler, now. What? What's he talking about? Nothing, love, nothing. Now look, I've told you before, it'll be far too messy. Help! I want to see my agent. All right, now, Def, stand by for Julian's extra special scene. And cue... Yeah, yeah, wait, wait a minute. What, 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 what's all this about a special scene? Read your script, love. Hey, Julian, explain how this next bit goes, will you? It goes whoosh, blam! Stuff flying everywhere! Did you not tell our boy that there were special scenes involved? I'm not doing it. Oh, all right. I'll go and find a stamp double. Honestly, you get some people in front of a camera and they think they're the Queen of the May. A skeleton stamp double, indeed. So where am I going to find a skeleton looking for a purpose in life? Where indeed? Now this puzzle is a bit vexing if you didn't go into the Fresh Start Club originally, and didn't open the closet. Thankfully. And now, I believe our resident Banshee, who has finally found a voice, wishes to witness for us. Brother Banshee! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Reds, thank you. And I think that what I mean to say by thank you is a thank us. A thank you addressed to all of us in that we are all part of the same body. Well, not exactly the same physical body, but the same spiritual body. Even though we are all actually inside bodies which are in fact spiritual. I think what I'm trying to encapsulate here is a sense of out-of-body experience that is an inner-body experience for us all. Right on, brother! Yes, yes, exactly. Right on, right on, and in. Seeing as the death within is also without, and exterior being is reflecting external processes, I think what we have here is very, very real. And by real, just let me say that this is also very surreal. Surreal. 
in that we transcend the essence of the mundane reality to, hmm, to, hmm, to redefine ourselves within the framework of our own perceptions of our role, yeah? And by role, I mean role sounds like role, doesn't it? So a motion forwards is implied in taking on that nomenclature. Get on with it! So, forward motion is an inherent part of us. And For as God's it is sake, of get us, on with it. it's also not of us, but around ah. us. And through us. And, and, had I finished? Possibly. Anyway, well said, Brother Banshee. Okay, I'll regret this, but... Excuse me. Shh. Oh, thank goodness he has nothing else to say. Aha! I was just wondering whether a career in the clickies might be just exactly what you're looking for. Oh, I see. The local actors' league won't let you in until you have proof that your family's from overseas. Bloody cheek of some people. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll have a look around and see what I can find to help prove your case for sheep in the arts. I'll get some evidence that proves that your ancestors came from distant climes. Because it couldn't just be easy enough to find him. Goodbye for now! Nope. We have to go find proof that there are sheep someplace overseas. Luckily, there is one foreign country that is famous for having sheep. But where are we supposed to find proof of that around here? Well, it's funny you ask that because we do have this surf here. And I've got this ironing board here and this saw here. Why do I suddenly feel like I'm in a sports sim? And I've also got a bunch of glue. Now I won't fall off so easily. Because I know enough of a rinse window, know he's a complete klutz. So. Where's the surf? Ah, there we go. Wizarding to the extreme! And this cave just happens to have pictures. And voila! Pictures of ancient sheep. A film of Neolithic sheep artwork. Yeah, it's not particularly interesting, but I still feel there's an award in this somewhere. Who might want proof that sheep come from a long way away? Some evidence that your ancestors came from the land of Forex. Now you can be a stunt sheep. Bah, 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 bah. No, no, don't thank me. <clears throat> Cue death! Now is the winter of our discontent, made all the more drizzly by the lack of death. Ooh, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether to be extremely cool, reach the heights of fashion, and snuff it. Or to keep drawing breath and lose all fashion sense forevermore.
Fine, everyone. Cut and paint. Ah, this is more of a lark. Watching someone else work for a change. That was beautiful, baby. Just beautiful. Wait a minute. Feathers? It was just feathers? What? Didn't you read the script? It's Julian's special scene. Oh, showbiz. Fame and fortune, I hear you calling. <clears throat> and nice little animation trick there. Thankfully, I've rigged this game that will run on my PC, so no need for disc changing like in the old days. <clears throat> Welcome to our audience and welcome to Death, the latest star to rise and shine in the land of Hollywood. Death, how do you feel about your up and coming premiere? I don't feel. I am Death. What he means is that he's confident that the product will speak for itself. That we've got something really astounding, really new, really, really... What? Look, just try to appear less skeletal or something, will you? Yes, well perhaps you might explain to us just why you feel death is the sex symbol for today's world. Oh Trish, we've always known that the height of style is pure, elegant restraint. And of course when it comes to wearing black, he's always been the trendsetter. Fabulous, fantastic. Well, that's it from outside the Odeon here tonight. This is Trish Looks Good inviting one and all to join me here tonight and get reaped. What's that microphone plugged into? Excuse me, do they have those chocolate coated ice creams here? The one with the little bits of nuts on them? They only had insect lava flavour. Insect lava? Hmm, some new invention imported from 4X apparently. When's this clicky starting then? Yes, hurry up! Some of us have to get back to bed before dawn. Rubbish! I say, this is appalling! Ugh! I haven't seen anything this awful since I saw the Dean in the showers. <laughs> Edited this thing. Say farewell to all your bills. Well, that didn't cut the mustard. No, 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 I thought it was awful. Well, in its awfulness, it had a certain beauty. Oh, Just him. as in beauty, we sometimes see awfulness pressing through from underneath. I mean, sure, sure. We all look at it and say, well, this presentation eats its own young. But I mean, is this a fair assessment? Can we really judge an art piece as being awful simply because it exhibits no attractive or interesting aspects at all? Actually, I felt that in many aspects, the film proved to be a very apt, very direct communication. Oh? Of what? Well, a communication of just how untalented some clicky makers can be. 
Okay, so it falls to us to save this film. Somehow. But first we'll look at everything in the room. Yeah, another poster. Who keeps putting these things up everywhere anyway? Anyway, who is Debbie? And what exactly did she do on the Discworld? Forest Thump. The tender story of a troll brought up by a family of dwarfs. A calendar? I'd take a closer look, but since it's one of Dibblers, I don't think I want to see who this month's model is likely to be. Well, obviously it's a... It's a... Um... A thingy. No, wait, what's that word I'm looking for? A wash name. That's the one. A prime, left-handed, reticulated wash name. Cans full of old clickies. I suppose it helps to keep the nutrition intact. Nothing useful here. A projector, and it's mine, all mine. Why? And look, it's operated by a crank. No jokes, please. Oh, too obvious. Well, now, clearly, we need to find some way of making this film a bit more uh, enjoyable. Well, this looks like it fits. You somehow rinse one automatically knows how a film editing machine works. This is an old school one. Now I think I'm onto something here. What if I splice in a few shots of the Elven Queen? Sort of subliminal, you might say. That should make them sit up and take notice. I don't know why they're still sitting around if they hated the movie so much. And this is the only thing they were showing that was barely a minute long. Beautiful, simply beautiful. I wish my smell could have seen that. Oh, that was that was better than being alive ever was. Now that's what I call real charisma. He'll go far. He will a real star. Oh, shut up. It seemed like a good idea at the time. How was I to know the spectre of death was going to become a pop icon? Now he says he doesn't want his old day job back. Now he's a style setter. Now millions of girls are cramming themselves into undersized tight black lace costumes with lots of black lace or dyeing their hair black wearing black lace and black nail polish and deep plum lipstick and black lace and being pale and very, very interesting. God, I hate wearing this dress. What do you mean it's all my fault? Well, of course I saw the game's opening credits. I was there. Well, no, I don't think that's a good idea at all. No, it's just not my cup of tea. to become deaf. Hmm. Well, I suppose it'll help me make new friends. Yeah, being deaf, that seems like a great way to uh, make friends. Well, we'll let you meet people.
Act Three, The Grim Rincewind. Yep, and in case it's not clear, we are now in Death's Domain, the little pocket dimension that he calls home. And uh, this is a good time for us to end this chapter. And next time we will continue on with the task of having Rincewind become the new Death. We'll see you next time.